the governor's residence at your house because you all pay for it. So enjoy it. Um, it's been a really interesting year, I'll tell you. Um, for me, in terms of our relationship and the perception of our relationship around the country, you know I get around the country a good amount. Um, both for my party and for our state. And um, I will tell you that, you know, there's a, there's a graze of intolerance that's going around our country that is disturbing to me. And, you know, this is something that, you know, as a political leader, you can uh, think you understand uh, as an objective observer, but you don't really understand until you become part of the story. And so, um, as many of you know, there have been two particular uh, actions uh, that I've taken that have drawn the ire of some people around the country. Um, and I think when we're together on a night like tonight, we should talk about it. Um, the first, obviously, was the nomination and confirmation of Sahel Muhammad. Uh, as a Superior Court judge. And by all accounts, so far in his, his young judicial career, Sohail is getting extraordinary reviews from lawyers who appear before him, litigants who appear before him, and his fellow judges who found him to be intelligent, well-prepared, reasonable, and doing an excellent job on the bench in Passaic County. This comes as a surprise to none of us who are friends of Sohail's, professional colleagues of his, uh, who have known him over the years. Uh, it comes as no surprise to me as someone who got an opportunity to work with him for a number of years as U.S. Attorney. But you'll recall, and, and I still hear this today, um, of the hysteria surrounding Sohail's appointment because of the work that he did in the private practice before he became a judge, uh, and for all of the, the nonsense that folks were spewing about, about the way he would conduct himself on the bench and this, all this business about Sharia law. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is that uh, these are the kind of red herrings that people put up who are bigots, who want to judge people based upon their religious beliefs, want to judge people um, with a broad brush, rather than be judging each individual on the basis of their own merits, their own accomplishments, and their own character. And so I'll tell you that I continue to be proud of the fact that uh, we nominated Sohail. I continue to be proud of the fact that we fought for his nomination. I'll continue to be ashamed of the conduct of people in both parties during his confirmation hearing, but relieved that he will serve as a pioneer now an example to dispel so many of these myths that have been passed both inside the state and around the country about someone of Sohail's background and his faith uh, being qualified to sit on the bench and to execute the Constitution and the laws of the state in a way that's faithful to both. He's done that, and I know he'll continue to do it throughout his entire career. And then, of course, my association over the years and, and, and my kind words over the years about Imam Khatnani. And uh, he's here tonight. Welcome, sir. Glad Thank to you. have you here. Thank you. Thank you. So I judge people based upon my relationship with them. And um, you'll all be fascinated to learn that in many publications um, around this country, I'm, I'm now called an Islamist. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, and um, you know, listen, I've been called worse things, um, usually on the boardwalk in Seaside Heights, but um, you all saw my reaction to that. Uh, but, you know, the fact of the matter is that in all my interactions over the years with the Imam, he has attempted to be a force for good in his community, in our state, with law enforcement. Um, and with those of us who have gotten to know him and worked with him over the years. And so I, I hope that what you see is a consistent strain of conduct for me. Um, I will 
judge people based upon their relationships with me and the way I observe them conduct themselves. And that's the basis upon which I'll make judgments. And while there may be other issues that come into play, and I certainly consider those, if other facts come in, um, I will tell you that the folks who I consider to be uh, my friends will continue to be uh, my friends uh, for as long as they continue to conduct themselves in a way that has integrity and honesty uh, and faith and belief in our common values and in the things that will help to make our state a better place. Uh, that's my job as governor. And I think that's also my responsibility as a human being is to not judge others any more harshly because of where they're from, what their faith is, or any other outside influences. So I welcome you all here tonight for this celebration as friends. And I hope that over the course of my public career, both of my time as U.S. Attorney and now the last two and a half years as governor, that you feel as if we've exhibited that friendship to you. Uh, the last thing I'll tell you to talk to you about is the obviously the incidents that occurred with the New York Police Department. Um, I think you saw me speak out rather forcefully and directly about those incidents when they occurred. Um, I think all of us favor aggressive law enforcement. But we favor aggressive, coordinated, responsible law enforcement. And one of the things that we all learned in the aftermath of September 11th is that law enforcement wasn't talking to each other. They weren't working with each other. They were competing with each other. And as a result, lives were lost. Can't have that anymore. Um, and my objection to the actions of the New York Police Department, first and foremost, were as a former law enforcement professional. It's a stupid way, in my view, to conduct law enforcement to keep other law enforcement officials in the dark, to not talk to the FBI in New Jersey, to not talk to the FBI in New York, to not talk to the state police in New Jersey. It doesn't make any sense. And secondly, to the extent that that law enforcement winds up going astray because they don't have the full and complete picture of what ha is happening in our state, that can lead to even worse problems for the citizens who are subjected to that law enforcement. I'd like to have New Jersey people with New Jersey sensibilities always involved in law enforcement activities that occur in our state. As much as the folks in New York may think they know us, they don't. And nor would they hesitate for a moment in raising the same objections I'm raising if the shoe were on the other foot. If we were to be going into New York all the time, invading their territorial space and not advising the almighty NYPD, you can imagine <laughs> the ruckus we would hear from Commissioner Kelly and Mayor Bloomberg and the gang over on the other side of the Hudson River. All we ask for in New Jersey as a sovereign power ourselves is the same measure of respect for ourselves and the citizens that we are sworn to serve. And so understand my objection. I don't have any objection to aggressive law enforcement that's going to help to protect your lives and the lives of your children and grandchildren. But I do have a concern about it when it's done in a way that doesn't keep everybody in the loop and doesn't then allow them to get the benefit of our knowledge and our experience with our citizens in our state, a much more diverse state than the state of New York. So we can bring certain specialties to the table that could be helpful. And you can count on the fact that I'll continue to speak out on those things. Um, first and foremost, because it's what I believe. And secondly, because it's right. And that's what we should all be thinking about in terms of the way we deal with each other. Is the first test should be is what we're doing right. And secondly then, is what we're doing what we want to see done to ourselves and our family and our friends. And then third is what we're doing helpful to our community, to build a spirit of kinship and brotherhood so that people lower their suspicions and increase their faith in each other. 
no matter what faith you follow, it seems to me that that's a part of each one of those faiths. To have a sense within your faith of community, to have that sense of community extend beyond your own faith to the other faiths that you interact with throughout the state. And so we need to do that for each other. And there will be times when frustrations will crop up from that. And I hope that when those frustrations crop up, that the conclusion is that we continue to talk to each other, and we continue to reason with each other, and that we don't give up on each other. Myself and this community, we have too much of a history, I contend, to give up on each other at any point over any issue. We've stood together strongly in much more difficult and challenging times than the ones we face right now. And so we need to continue to build on the successes of the past and we'll try to fix the mistakes that happen along the way. And then there may be times when we don't agree on something. It will happen. And when we don't, we have to disagree with each other respectfully and then move on to the next topic. Because there is not any one topic, I believe, that exists between our community and your government that should be the defining issue in the relationship, given the long history that we have together. So, I welcome you here tonight. I'm glad that the weather is held up. And I'll tell you, I was in Atlantic City today on the boardwalk. It was hot. And it's much nicer, much more pleasant tonight. And I'm glad we have a more well, pleasant evening for you out here um, than it was during the day today. I was thinking, I was hearing this was going to be outside tonight, and I'm like, man, I hope it cools off, because it was pretty hot during the day today, but luckily, the setting of the sun has also allowed us some relief from the heat. Uh, I, I, I wish all of you a blessed season. Uh, I wish it for you and for your families. And I hope that as we progress through the next year, we find new opportunities to work with each other. New opportunities to break down new barriers that exist in our society. I see a delegate to the Republican National Convention here. She will be joining me in Tampa, and I'm proud to have her with us. And in all the things that we do and in the folks that we choose to associate ourselves with, um, I'll go back to where I started. It should always be judged on the basis of the character, the content of the character of the people, and not based on any other differences that we may have in terms of faith, in terms of ethnicity, in terms of country of origin, or other parts of our background. It should be judged based upon the content and the character of each and every one of us. And so please know that you're always welcome in this house, as long as I'm here. That there will always be a place where everyone of your faith is welcome. And that I hope you'll always find it to be a place where you're not only told you're welcome, but where you'll feel welcome. Because we know there's lots of times where we're told we're welcome in certain places, but the feel is a little different than the words. I hope that you will always find this place a place where the feel matches the words of welcome. And Mary Pat and I will continue to work really hard to make sure that that always exists in this house for as long as we're honored to occupy it. She brings her greetings tonight. She is running around with three of our four children tonight at various summer activities. Um, so thank you for letting me be here. <laughs> so I'm not doing the same thing. Um, and she sends her best and her well wishes, apologizes for not being able to, to join us tonight, uh, but she asked me to make sure that I tell all of you uh, that she shares the same wishes for you that I do. Please continue to work with the folks in our administration. You have a lot of uh, old <laughs> friends in this administration from past successes. Charlie McKenna, my chief counsel. And Ed Dixon, my new chief of Homeland Security and preparedness. Here as well. And so these are all folks who you've worked with before. 
including others in my administration, and hope, folks that I hope you'll continue to feel comfortable working with again. Last thing I'll tell you is one small bit of business. Please continue to recommend highly qualified and interested folks for positions in our administration, whether they be inside the administration, on boards or commissions or authorities, for judicial positions or others. Um, I continue to want to diversify the workforce in this state to make it look more like the state that it serves. And the only way to do that is if you make suggestions to me. You know your community much better than I do. If there are folks you want to continue to recommend, please do. And we'll continue to do the best we can to make sure that we place the very best of those folks in positions that both interest them and are appropriate for their experience and background. That serves them well, and it will serve the state well. So please don't hesitate to do that. We ask you, urge you to continue to do that for us. Um, it helps me 